Hello, this demonstration takes you step by step through the Weatherstaff Planting Planner screens, showing you how to create your first planting plan. If you're looking instead for a short introduction to the Planting Planner and its benefits for beginner, experienced and professional gardeners, please click the link on the video. The Weatherstaff Planting Planner creates tailor-made plans for your garden, so you need to start by drawing out the shape of your borders and specifying your garden's growing conditions. You will also choose your colour scheme and pick a garden style. So let's get started by clicking on the New Plan button. In the pop-up dialog, enter the size of your design area. This could be the whole of your garden or section of it. I've put in 10 by 6 metres. Press Next. Now enter the climate for your garden. The Weatherstaff Planting Planner is geared towards temperate climates such as we have in the UK, but can be used for other regions with similar climate, such as other Northern European countries and the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Throughout the programme there is always readily available help. Click on the Climate Bands description link here to get an explanation of the climate bands. And for novice gardeners, there is additional advice on how you may need to adjust the climate band because of local factors. I'll go for a moderate climate. After clicking on the Finish button, the first screen is displayed. This is where you can draw out the shape of your borders. The Planting Planner consists of a series of screens which you can move between using the tabs at the top. Before going any further, you need to draw your border layout. There are a number of drawing tools available, as shown by these buttons along the top, but I'll just use a few of them and draw a quick design. You can have more than one border in a plan, so I'll add a small island bed as well. The next screen is the Styles and Conditions screen. Here you specify for each border, we call them planting areas, what you want the planting to look like, as well as the soil and light conditions. So select the first planting area and click on the Style button. Up pops a dialogue with three pages. On the first page, enter the style you want. Styles affect the type of plants that are chosen for a border and how they are arranged. There are explanations of each style in the Help panels including cottage garden, contemporary, woodland, etc. There are additional options, such as family friendly, which will exclude plants known to be poisonous and give preference to non-prickly plants, wildlife friendly, low maintenance, etc. On the second page, choose the colour scheme you want for this planting area. Mood sets the type of colours. Choose from soft, rich, vibrant or hot. Colour palette indicates how many colours to use. I'll choose rich purples with white highlights. You can specify up to three colour themes which the planting planner will merge together across the planting area. Click next to get to the last page where you select the lighting and soil conditions. Again, for the beginner gardener, there is help available to guide you through choosing these values. For example, how to measure the pH value of your soil and how to improve and prepare your soil. I'll quickly choose some typical values. And I'll repeat all this for the second planting area. This time I'm choosing Vibrant Pinks. At this stage there's enough information to generate a plan, but there are two more optional screens which provide additional flexibility. On the Boundary screen you can mark out boundary sections, such as a fence or wall that you want to cover with climbers. It also allows you to indicate which sections of the boundary are the front of the border and which are the back or sides. By default, each planting area has one low lawn edge front boundary all the way around it, so is in effect an island border, with larger structural planting in its centre. When you use boundary sections to indicate the front and back of a border, the planting planner will position lower plants near the front of a planting area and larger structural plants with year-round interest towards the back. 
There are a number of tools for marking out boundary sections. The program provides interactive help to show how these can be used. I'll choose the marker tool and mark out one section, which I'll set as a fence at the back of the border. I'll choose the relevant option to indicate that this is the back of the planting area. To show the use of another boundaries tool, I'll select the scissors tool and use it to split the fence into two separate sections and specify that I only want one end to be covered by climbers. I click on the boundary at the point where I want to cut it into two and then select one section and specify that it should be covered. Once you've finished adjusting the boundaries, move to the second optional screen, the pre-positioned plant screen. You would use this screen if you are revamping an old border and want to keep certain existing plants. Or perhaps you just want to pre-position a few favourite plants in a new border. The planting planner will then generate a plan around these pre-positioned plants. On this screen you select plants from the planting planner's built-in encyclopedia, or create your own, and manually position them in the planting area. First select the position tool by clicking on the button in the top toolbar. Then click in the planting area where you want to position a plant. The choose a plant dialog box will pop up. The planting planner can suggest suitable plants. Or you can select plants by name or by attribute or enter your own choice of plant if it isn't already in the built-in encyclopedia. I'll choose a suggested plant. A second dialogue will pop up asking how many plants you want in this group. I'll specify three. The planting planner will position the plants around where you clicked. At this stage they are movable green circles. If you want to fine-tune their positions, click on each one and drag it to its final position. When you're satisfied, click the Complete Group button in the top toolbar. OK, I'm now ready to generate a plan, so I'll click on the Generate button. The Weatherstaff Planting Planner is doing all the difficult juggling for you, working out the best combinations of plants to use and where to plant them, for a stunning border with structure and all year round interest. It will incorporate your pre-positioned plants into the design. As you hover around the finished plan, you will find details, photographs and maintenance instructions for each plant displayed on the left. Click on a plant to lock it and look at it in detail. Page through the photographs. Look at the plant's attributes. View details and descriptions of the plant and maintenance advice. You can regenerate the plant again and again. There will be subtle variations each time. You can go back at any time to try different colour and style combinations. You can exclude plants you don't want in your plan and lock in place ones you particularly like. You can substitute a plant for one of your own choice, either chosen from the built-in encyclopedia or one that you create yourself. I'll search for a heuchera and use it as a substitute plant. You can also go back to the pre-positioned plant screen and position more plants of your own choosing into the generated plan. The plan has all year round interest. 
You can view the different seasons here. The Weather Staff Planting Planner. It's a garden designer and horticultural expert rolled into one. 